Sodium disorders can be described as high sodium, low sodium, hypernatremia, hyponatremia. Now, hypernatremia, hypernatremia, or the high sodium, even though it's hypernatremia, we want to be able to say, well, is this just simply a person who has loss, chronic loss of fluids from the skin? I'm sweating, 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 sweating. Oh, from the urine, 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 urine. I'm urinating a lot, diuretics, diuretics, or just polyuria, or the GI tract, such as vomiting, diarrhea, nasogastric suction. Now, interestingly enough, these things can also be causes of hyponatremia if you end up replacing with free water. For instance, if you sweat, 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 and you drink water, 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 eventually you lose a little salt and a lot of water, but if you just replace with free water, the sodium will drive down. If you urinate out a little salt and a lot of water, and you replace just with free water, you can drive the sodium down. If you have diarrhea or vomiting and you replace with free water, eventually you'll drive the sodium down. However, if you're not replacing with free water, you'll become hypernatremic, hypernatremic. So these things with just skin losses, urine losses, and GI losses, without replacing with free water, they're causes of hypernatremia. Now, the other part that causes hypernatremia is diabetes insipidus. Now, diabetes insipidus causes a polyuria. I'm urinating a lot. Well, what's the difference between polyuria and urinary frequency? What's the difference between polyuria and urinary frequency? So in polyuria, and in urinary frequency, you're urinating very frequently, very often. Well, then what's the difference then? Polyuria means an increased volume of urine. These things over here, these don't have polyuria. These are people who are simply dry. Matter of fact, if you had a lot of persons sweating and urinary loss, and you were, had a lot of diarrhea, and you had polyuria, they'd be quite ill. Now, polyuria also is a part of psychogenic polydipsia. So psychogenic polydipsia also has polyuria because you're drinking all the time, so you're urinating all the time. You're drinking all the time, so you're urinating all the time. So which of these has a urine sodium that's low? Diabetes insipidus or polyuria? Diabetes insipidus is either an insufficient amount of antidiuretic hormone or ineffective antidiuretic hormone. It's either an insufficient amount of antidiuretic hormone or it is an ineffective antidiuretic hormone, vasopressin that you're collecting duct. So which of these, diabetes insipidus or psychogenic polydipsia, has a low urine sodium? They both do. They both have a low urine sodium. If you can find me someone who's urinating all the time, something with a high urine sodium, you should report it in the Bible because it would be a miracle. It's a low urine sodium. Well, low means less than 20, less than 20. All right. Diabetes insipidus. I either have an in sufficient amount of ADH, or I don't have an effect of ADH at my collecting ducts. Psychogenic polydipsia. I have a person who has a mania problem, and they're drinking all the time, and they're drinking 18 to 24 liters a day, and they're urinating 18 to 24 liters a day. Well, diabetes insipidus. Ah, uh, these people are also drinking. 18 to 24 liters a day. These people are also urinating 18 to 24 liters a day. So what's the difference between them? Diabetes insipidus, if the question describes a high sodium, it's diabetes insipidus. And if the question describes a low sodium, it's psychogenic polydipsia. But one of the things that people don't realize about diabetes insipidus is that as long as you have access to water, 
you don't actually raise your sodium. Your thirst stays intact with diabetes insipidus. Your thirst stays intact. So since your thirst stays intact, as you're urinating, 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 the body just makes you replace the water by drinking. And that's why you actually could have a normal serum sodium in both of these. In psychogenic polydipsia, you'll just continue to urinate and urinate until you get finally to the maximum diluting capacity and then the sodium will drop. In diabetes insipidus, you continue to urinate and urinate and your sodium will stay normal until you have no access to water. So they both have a low urine sodium, but which of them has a low urine osmolality? Which of these will have a low, which of these will have a low urine osmolality? Low urine osmolality means under 100, under 50. And the answer is both of them. If you can find me someone who's urinating out 18 to 24 liters a day of a high urine osmolality, you should report it in the Bible because it would be a miracle. You can't be urinating out that much water at a high urine osmolality. So what you should do is that you can't look to see polyuria and polydipsia. They both have polyuria and polydipsia. How do you know what's coming first? In this case, in diabetes insipidus, the urination leads to the drinking. In psychogenic polydipsia, the drinking leads to the urination. So how will you tell them apart? Now, most people want to say water deprivation test. And that's true. A water deprivation test will distinguish it. In other words, when you stop letting people drink, psychogenic polydipsia should go away once you stop drinking. But diabetes insipidus, you continue to urinate all nights, all right with me, even if you stop drinking because it's a disease of endocrine deficiency. But the first thing you ask people is simply about nocturia. Urinating at night. How often do you urinate at night? How often do you urinate at night? And you don't really think about it. But in psychogenic polydipsia, once you stop drinking, you'll stop urinating, and especially at night. But diabetes insipidus, even though you stop drinking, you continue all night long to continue to go to the bathroom. So that's how you tell them apart. Because everybody, when they go to sleep, every night when you go to sleep, you're doing your own water deprivation test. You go, mm, I'm tired. You go upstairs and do the water deprivation test. And you stop drinking, and you continue to urinate if you have diabetes insipidus. Water deprivation test. Now, what happens when you have in a normal person, a normal person, the urine volume, the urine volume when you stop drinking, well, the urine volume when you stop drinking should go down. When you stop drinking, the urine volume should go down. But if you have diabetes insipidus, you continue to make a high urine volume despite the fact that the serum osmolality is going up. You continue to make a high urine volume despite the fact that as you dry out, you still don't shut off the urine volume. That's a water deprivation test. And the way to tell central and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is in central diabetes insipidus, when I give ADH, when I give desmopressin, the urine volume will go down when I give ADH. So this is how you tell central and nephrogenic. 
Central diabetes insipidus is simply deficiency. Central diabetes insipidus is that I have had any sort of brain damage. I've had a stroke, I've had tumor, I've had trauma, I've had hypoxia, I've had infection, I've had granulomatous disease destroying my hypothalamus, my paraventricular and supraoptic nuclei where I make my ADH. And when I've had stroke, I've had damage, I've had hypoxia, I've had head trauma, I've had cancer damaging this stroke, tumor trauma, hypoxia, granulomatous disease, sarcoidosis, histiocytosis X, dinosaur bites, chopping off my head. Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, one can be from chronic kidney disease, the other is from low potassium and high calcium. You need to have a normal potassium and a normal calcium level for ADH to work right at your kidney tubule. You need to have a normal potassium and a normal calcium for ADH to work right at your kidney tubule. So that's why the first thing to do in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is to fix these electrolyte disorders. In central diabetes insipidus, we just replace intramuscular vasopressin, subcutaneous vasopressin, nasal spray vasopressin. Just take the vasopressin and you're golden. But in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, you fix the underlying cause. And this is one of the reasons why those patients with hypercalcemia have a massive volume deficit because it's not just the osmotic diuresis of high calcium, it's caused high calcium blocks the effect of ADH at the collecting duct. High calcium blocks the effect of ADH at the collecting duct. High calcium blocks the effect of ADH at the collecting duct. High calcium blocks the effect of ADH at the collecting duct. High calcium makes you dry. High calcium makes you dry. Liters dry. Four, six, eight, ten liters. Correct the underlying cause. And then this last one is hard to understand. Why do thiazides and non-steroidals fix Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. How do they alter the renal concentrating ability? Because they do. How do thiazides? Not even Dr. Fisher possesses such large Leydigans or Tolley cells that I want to give a diuretic to someone who's urinating 12 liters a day. But thiazides alter the renal concentrating ability so that you can fix a nephrogenic diabetes insipidus with thiazides. And inhibiting prostaglandins with non-steroidals does it too. Hypernatremia. One, I'm just dry. I'm sweating. I'm urinating. I'm having diarrhea. And I have hypernatremia. Two, I have diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus can look like psychogenic polydipsia. Now, if the, so they tell you the sodium is low, then you know it's not diabetes insipidus. But what happens when the sodium is high? Excuse me, sodium level is normal. Well, they both have a low urine sodium. They both have a low urine osmolality. You distinguish it based on nocturia and water deprivation test. When you have psychogenic polydipsia, when you stop drinking, you stop urinating. Next, how do I tell central versus nephrogenic? If I give you ADH, your urine volume should come down to normal. When I give you ADH, your urine volume should come back down to normal. <clears throat> and that's how you tell that it is central diabetes insipidus. I have central diabetes insipidus from stroke, tumor, trauma, hypoxia, brain damage, granulomatous disease. Just replace. Replace des vasopressin. Replace desmopressin. Replace it. You can find some people can live for years on it. I have nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, thankfully a very rare disorder. Correct the underlying cause, low potassium, high calcium, and then others get thiazides and the non-steroidal. It's hard to remember for people why high calcium causes such volume depletion. It's not just the osmotic diuresis of high calcium. It is the fact that you inhibit the effect ADH on the collecting duck and it dries you down, dries you like sand. Nothing on this board has changed in 40 years.
Commit. 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 Commit.